Okay, so I'm bringing you a really fast video again, showing kind of like a real life weeknight fast dinner put together. I'm making a Rani Sambar. It's a lentil soup that I adapted from the Sambar Masala recipe on this little thing. And so I'll show you how I do it oil free and this guy's gonna help me get some good shots. So anyway, come along and see. It's really good, it's one of my favorite soups in the universe. <laughs> Okay, so about 10 minutes ago or so, I got some onions into the Instant Pot and they are um, water sauteing. I'm getting them nice and golden and I'm getting ready to chop all the veggies and then I'll add some spices too, but that's always my first step um, is just sort of letting it go. And then if you notice it kind of overcooking, you can just add extra water. If you need tutorials on water sauteing, there's a lot of tutorials out there already but I can make one eventually. That's just not this video. So uh, first off, yeah, get your onion uh, cooking up and then I want to add my um, veggies. So I've got the veggies. So the recipe calls for two cups of veggies. I always end up with more. Um, and then this is how I do it and keep it nice and, and fast. Usually uh, for stuff like this, so it changes every time actually, I use different vegetables like every single time I do this. Um, but for this time around, I'm gonna be doing, uh, I'm gonna be doing squash. And so, um, obviously be very careful when you use the mandolin. And I normally would use this thing, it just doesn't work as well for this stuff. And the thing is, I just go really slow and I keep, I make sure to keep my hand out of the way. Um, basically, when you're using a mandolin, there is no such thing as being in a hurry. You just have to keep that in your mind. And then, um, also because, so like this is the case with like zucchini and carrots too, like it's got a handle up top. And I just use the handle. And then the rest goes away. So now this, I'm gonna go ahead and add to the pot. And let it start kind of getting cooked. Um, and I'll get these cut up and added. And then I will be back with the cabbage. Okay, so I've got everything in the pot. And I, I didn't film it, but I did just a tiny bit of salt. And now you don't do a ton of salt. Um, you just do a little... And then that helps everything start releasing its juices and it just helps things to cook and then also it helps to get the brown off the bottom of the pan. Now some of this is just like staining like but all of the actual brown um, I don't know this stuff getting stuck and being super flavorful all of that is gone and also you want to make sure all of that is gone before you start your soup or else you might get the burn light from the Instant Pot. But, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut up some cabbage. Um, so I'm using a red cabbage I need to use up. Normally I make sauerkraut out of these, but I've just been sitting in the fridge a little too long because I just haven't gotten to it. And I made like five or six, I can't remember how many quarts, like five or six quarts of kimchi. So I think we're good for a little while on the <laughs> fermented stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chop this up and add it to the soup. And so the way that I do cabbage is, I, I guess it's similar to the way I do cauliflower. You sort of just get in um, with a good knife and cut it, I quarter, and then put this piece out, it's compost, um, and I go ahead and then like cut it into eighths total. So take that quarter, cut it in half one more time, and then I just start slicing on the edge. And then these pieces will just go in like that. And that's how I do the whole cabbage. And I am gonna add the whole cabbage. So I forgot, I did say, so it, it asked for two cups of veggies in the original recipe. And I'm doing a double recipe in case you're like, dang, it's like crap time. Um, I'm like I said, I'm doubling the recipe. So anyway, any that are too thick, I go ahead and change. But other than that, we're good. Okay, so I've got all the veggies in the pot, and that's the part that takes the most time. It's just oh my gosh, look how pretty it is. But 
The other thing that you don't necessarily realize because you weren't watching the whole time is also pre-cooking the vegetables like this, not only does it help release flavor, but it also reduces the size of the vegetables, which is helpful for when you're trying to pack a lot of food into the Instant Pot. Um, and then also, um, the thing to keep in mind is I see a lot of people in my, like my stocking group on Facebook, <laughs> I talk about a lot. Um, and they ask, you know, they're like, I have a crock pot. I don't need an instant pot. I don't need these new gadgets or whatever. And the thing is, I used to have two crock pots. Like I loved my crock pots, but I am a full instant pot. Um, I was going to say converter, somebody who has converted to the instant pot, 100% <laughs> like, because primarily for this function right here where I can like saute my onions and get that golden flavor and actually brown things and do it all in one pot and it's just oh fantastic i feel like every single college student needs one of these in their dorm like instead of a hot plate anyway that's all i'm saying about that but so the other thing i like is that it can pre-cook some veggies that might take a little longer um but when you're using beans usually it's not a big deal because beans take a long time to cook however in this recipe, I am using red lentils. And red lentils are fantastic because they only take about, I remember, I think it's three minutes to cook. Let me look it up. So, okay, I have this vegan instant pot cookbook. It's actually a really good cookbook. It's got a lot of amazing recipes in it. The thing I find myself using it for more than anything else is the chart in the front. And so she's got charts for everything. And let me check. Um, lentils, sure enough, red lentils only take two minutes to cook. And so also I have checked all these veggies and this, both the squash and the cabbage take two to three minutes to cook. So I'm going to cook this entire soup for three minutes in an instant pot and then it will be done. But that is something to keep in mind if you're using lentils or red lentils especially because they take such a short amount of time to cook, use only vegetables that also take only like two or three minutes to cook, because if you try to put potatoes in here, they're not gonna get cooked before the lentils get cooked, just like as an FYI. Or you could switch to a bean that takes a little more time and then you can use potatoes. So anyway, it's just like kind of something to keep in mind, you kind of try to keep everything that goes in the pot cooking at the same amount of time. So now I am ready to actually finish, get everything in and set it and forget it and then we will have a manic soup. So um, the original recipe calls for a cup of diced tomatoes and so typically for a double batch I just toss in one can of diced tomatoes and so that is roughly half of a jar of tomato paste or a can of tomato paste. So I'm just going to put in half a can of tomato paste um, for that like full can of diced tomatoes. Um, and then also I prefer the flavor of tomato paste. It's like, it's just sweeter and more yummy. Um, so I'm gonna put this and start sort of mixing it up before any liquids get added, just so that it will mix once the liquids get adding without, with, get added without having to pre-mix it in, um, you know, whatever, measuring cup or whatever you normally do. I'm also not mixing it all the way to the bottom. I don't know if you notice. I don't want it to brown on the bottom. So now, <clears throat> in the original recipe, they have you do mustard seeds as a topping, but I, like, because it gets fried in oil, I just add them now. So it's two teaspoons of mustard seeds for um, a double batch. And then it also calls for kind of ridiculous amount of sambar masala, but this is where the flavor is, you guys. This is all the flavor. So it's three tablespoons per recipe. So for this full pot, I will use six tablespoons and hopefully that is six. I didn't lose count. Oh, that is nodding. I guess he was yes. counting. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I'm glad somebody was counting. So the original recipe also calls for a teaspoon of salt per um, recipe. I'm gonna do just one teaspoon of salt, maybe just a tiny bit more. I try to cut back on the salt, but I'm not there yet to the whole like 100% salt free. Like I already do oil free and even mostly gluten free. Um, but I don't, I'm not there yet with the salt. So anyway, um, I do try to reduce it a bit though, but I'm of the opinion too, like 
some people say like salt is a scapegoat. Salt is not the reason that people have high blood pressure. It's all of the meat and the dairy clogging your arteries and all that. That's why people have high blood pressure, not salt. Anyway, okay. So I added my two cups of lentils because it's a double recipe and um, there is gonna be a full recipe down in the description box, which I will write out for you guys. Um, and now I will start kind of mixing it. And I've just got my water, with my jar filling up. I keep a jar next to my stove, which is my jar that I use for just cooking, you know, when I replace it periodically. Um, so I'm just getting plenty of water in here. I'm gonna fill it up to the max. Um, oh my gosh, it smells so amazing. I didn't even know if I could tell you how amazing this smells because, well, I can tell you, but <laughs> you're still not gonna know unless you're here. And so here, the other nice thing about pre-cooking a whole bunch of ingredients like this is that it increases the uh, temperature of stuff in the pot, which also decreases the amount of time that it takes for the pot to come to full pressure which is really nice. All right, just sort of getting a last of the water in there. And I was gonna add this pepper for my garden. I don't know if I should add it. Should I add the jalapeno fab? Almost definitely. Oh, okay. <laughs> well then I guess I will chop up a jalapeno and throw that in there. And then that nice, gorgeous red jalapeno, it went red on the bush. Like, oh, this is gonna, it's so sweet and delicious when you let them ripen on the actual plant. Although I normally don't let them ripen all the way because I want more peppers, but at this point I have like 300 peppers on those plants and so it's like, okay, fine, fine, I've had enough. I'll let some of them ripen to make them better. But yeah. All right, so that's everything and I will add this pepper and then I guess we'll be back and you can see um, what it looks like. Okay, so just for the curious amongst you, also, just in case you don't know, if you're using a real, like a hot pepper, you don't, you either don't touch it or you be really careful. So my goal is to just not touch it. So I have just done all of this without even touching anything. And I was using the handle of the pepper to get the slices. So now it's gonna go into the Instant Pot and I'm gonna just scrape that in there and then use this and then all this is just I'm gonna go ahead and go wash and rinse this and you can wash and rinse stuff off you know pretty easily like other stuff but if you get it on your hands it's like so hard to deal with so I just don't even touch it that's how I cut my hot peppers anyway that's it and then Sage made everyone sit on the counter <laughs> except me she didn't even ask me <laughs> Um, oh, okay. <laughs> all right, I guess I will give it a shot. Okay, so it's finally all finished in the pot and we've got our bowls of soup for everybody and um, Sage's dinner is a little different, it always is. And then while this was going, I threw together some quinoa chickpea patties out of some leftovers I had in the fridge and I think they turned out pretty good. So if they work, I'll start developing a recipe um, but I definitely have a lot of tricks and tips that I can share for how to make good vegan patties out of whole foods <laughs> and so anyway that's it so dinner is done and we're gonna eat it it smells incredible it tastes incredible and yeah we are excited so as always I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful thank you so much for watching bye